It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 905, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy first Friday in the new year. Welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send me the questions, and I answer them for you. So if you're new here and are wondering what this Q&A episode is all about, well, well, every Friday, I answer a question that was sent to me via audio by a listener. I'll explain how to do that at the end of the episode. But my philosophy is I wanna give you the truth. I wanna bust through some of these nutrition and fitness and stress management myths and cut to what does the actual research say? Because that's really what's most important. It's not my opinion per se, but what do the data say? What does the research say? According to Napoleon Hill, opinions are the cheapest commodity on earth. Everyone has them. It just doesn't mean that they're correct. And so as often as possible, I try and back up what I say with actual data. So with that, I'm sure you're eager to hear our first question of the new year. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Hi, Dr. Neal. I was wanting more information on basic vitamin supplements. I'm in my 50s, and for many years I've taken multivitamins with calcium. I recently went for an annual physical with a new physician, and he said if I'm eating a well-balanced diet, research doesn't really support me taking these vitamin supplements. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Thank you for your question, Jean. Think of multivitamins like this. They're like having an insurance policy. Taking one every day probably doesn't hurt, but may help under certain conditions. And here's why. In industrialized countries like the United States, the abundance of food has prevented many of the common nutrient deficiencies that used to be so common. So the risk of developing a vitamin or mineral deficiency is pretty low. There are, of course, exceptions to this. For example, as we get older, we may become deficient in certain nutrients. This happens for a lot of reasons. But here's an example. It's quite normal to lose some of our ability to absorb vitamin B12 as we age. Again, very normal. It basically happens to everyone. It's also possible because even though we have all of this abundancy, we may not select the most nutritious foods. Now, when someone tells me they're consuming a well-planned, balanced diet, I usually don't take their word for it. I like them to tell me what they're eating so that I can, you know, cross-examine them a bit. I like to get a bit more detail and see if they're being honest with me. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case here, Gene, but something you can do is to start writing down everything you eat and drink and in what quantities. Do this for at least three days each week for the next four weeks. Try and choose days that are representative of how you normally eat. So don't select holidays, for example, but do make sure that at least one of the days is a Saturday or Sunday. This is because we often eat very differently on the weekend when compared to weekdays. Now, the advantages to keeping a food journal like this would be one, it will help you observe patterns in your diet so that you may begin to notice which foods you consume too little or too much of, And two, you can bring your food journal to your next doctor's visit and show it to your physician. He then may be able to better assess whether a daily multivitamin is right for you. Now, just by keeping a food journal, you're probably going to automatically change your behavior because now you're going to be accountable to what you write down. That's very normal. And if that happens, kudos to you. That's fine. It just now means you're going to be eating even better than you normally would. Bonus. Now, based on the information you mentioned, Gene, I would consider continuing with the calcium supplement at a minimum. This is because women particularly are at an increased risk for developing osteoporosis after the age of 45. Osteoporosis is that nasty disease that leads to holes forming in our bones. The word osteo or osteon refers to bone and porosis or porous refers to something having small spaces or holes in it. I know that there has been some controversy lately about the effectiveness of calcium supplementation and osteoporosis prevention, but the majority of studies do find that there is some benefit, especially if someone isn't getting enough calcium in their diet. I would consider asking your doctor about supplementing with 300 to 500 milligrams of calcium each day. Also, if your doctor hasn't done this already, go ahead and request a blood test that looks at your vitamin D levels. This is because vitamin D, along with calcium, helps to make your bones stronger. If your levels are low, it may be worthwhile to consider a vitamin D supplement too. But if your test comes back normal, there may be no need to supplement with vitamin D. 
Now, based on how your cholesterol levels look, Gene, I would also consider an omega-3 supplement, but only if your cholesterol levels don't look all that great. Now, going back to your multivitamin question, here's where I stand. And I'm gonna quote the US Preventive Service Task Force here. The data suggests that there is little risk of harm when taking a daily multivitamin. Rather, it could be beneficial if nutritional deficiencies exist. Hence my insurance policy analogy. Now, if you and your doctor decide that taking a multivitamin or calcium or vitamin D is right for you, keep in mind that some of the vitamins and minerals you get in pill form may not always be absorbed. There are a number of reasons for this. First, physiologically, our bodies are better equipped to pull nutrients from food instead of a pill. Second, the way the supplements are manufactured affects how the body absorbs them. Some vitamins are immediately destroyed when they hit the stomach because of the stomach's strong acid content. Others are better absorbed when you take them with food. For example, calcium is often found in two forms when you buy it as a supplement, calcium citrate and calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate specifically is better absorbed when taken with food. Oh, and calcium is better absorbed when some vitamin D is present too. And just so you know, gummy vitamins most often fail quality testing, so it may be best to stay away from those for now. So here are some tips when buying a supplement, any supplement. One, ignore any misleading claims. Misleading claims on the packaging of nutrition supplements can still happen. If a supplement promises to be a cure for something, ignore it and definitely don't buy it. And next, do your homework. Check for quality and purity. One way to do that, it's really easy, is look for NSF or a USP symbol on the packaging. If you want even more details, check out consumerlab.com and do a quick search on their website. Just know that consumerlab.com to access their complete database will charge a fee. So the bottom line is this. Taking a multivitamin daily probably won't hurt you. It's possible it may help. But of course, make sure you and your doctor are on the same page and discuss if there are specific other supplements they would prefer you take instead, like calcium and vitamin D and even omega-3s. Thank you again for your question, Gene. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you want to be in the raffle, send me a question. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. You can record right from your computer's microphone. It's really easy and you can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I Love ohd Both methods are in this episode's description which you can find at oldpodcast.com. All right, the first week of 2020 has come and gone already. Thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. We couldn't be here without you. Have a wonderful first weekend of the new year and I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.